All right, so this morning, God kind of mixes things up on us sometimes. I'll tell you, one of the things I've always appreciated from God and always loved is his randomness sometimes. You can plan all week and plan all week and think all week and and have things ready to go Sunday. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, there's a change of plans. <laughs> God does that sometimes. Um, a lot of people I ask, well, do you go with the original message you have or do you go with what God's laid on you? Well, it depends on how urgent the need is. And I think there is no more urgent need than today for to talk what we need to talk about. And this goes to every Christian and every non-Christian in the world. One of the things that I hold very true is that the principle of united we stand, divided we fall is not just some pretty saying that we made here in the state of Kentucky, our state motto. I take it very seriously. The church will be united if we stay true to what God's word says, if we obey the gospel as it is written and as Christ has commanded, and we continue to seek his face in all <coughs> pardon, in all times. God is capable of doing many wonderful things if we allow him the opportunity and allow him to lead and direct us as he sees fit. The problem is in our world today, not many people are wanting to trust God. And in fact, they're not wanting to trust one another. And so division comes. Divisions that are made by men, not by God. God doesn't cause division. God creates unity. God has always created unity. God has created unity since the beginning of time. We are not created in the image of people that were already here. We are not created based on our geographical locations. We are made in the image of God. And if you take that seriously, you'll take what Scripture says, right? Because what did God say in Genesis? He said, let us make, God, let us make man in our image. Well, yeah, that's what we need to be thinking. We need to be willing to trust God. We need to be willing to accept the truth that there is unity in Jesus, unity in the body, and moreover, unity in mankind. We have to respect one another. And it is something that today there is far too little of. I've listened for weeks on end about how divided our people are. How bad the world has become. And what is the church doing about it? I think too many times we take the easy road out. We say that, oh, it'll be okay. We'll be fine. We just have to trust in God's leadership and direction. But do we even care about what God's leadership and direction is when we're out attacking one another? Let me turn, let me turn the Bible to you here and let's see what Scripture says about as the body of Christ, what we are to do, and as a world, what we should do. <clears throat> Pardon me. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 through 6. Ephesians chapter 4. I want you to listen to these words very carefully. This is what the body of Christ is. We are to be united as one. One. Not many. One. There is one body and one spirit just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all, through all, and in all. Now, 
I prayed about this. What direction was I going to go with this morning on it? Because so many people are arguing, fussing, and fighting over this unity. It's in the churches even. I went to one congregation and got to hear about that. How divided they were. That some were over on a very legalistic end and some in a very liberal end. And that's how our world is. Our world has torn itself apart because there is no middle ground. There's no compromise anymore. There's no understanding that there is a middle ground here. Some people say, well, you're a fence sitter. What are you talking about? You're milk toast. You're being just as, you're being the bigger problem than any of them. You should have an opinion. I do have an opinion. Unity, not division. My, my solution's simple. If the church wants to continue to be the church that it needs to be, it needs to be biblical. The church needs to be based in one principle, and that is the gospel. We need to be united in the one hope we have through our one Lord, our one Savior, Jesus Christ. We are united in that principle, and we need to be able to carry that out every single day of our lives. Everything we do should point to Jesus. Every single thing. But too many times we have people that point to other things. Too many times division creeps in. Allow me to go back to a problem that the church at Corinth had. They were divided. Very divided. They had this idea in place that they could believe whoever they wanted to believe and be okay. Moreover, that if you believed something else, you were wrong and you were destined to go to hell. Our society today is very much that way. We need to be willing to understand and be able to teach the need for unity in all things. Look at what Scripture says here. Verse 10 of chapter 1. Verse 10, chapter 1, 1 Corinthians. Read what this says. Now I exhort you, brethren... By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be made complete in the same mind and in the same judgment. For I've been informed concerning you, my brethren, by Chloe's people, that there are some quarrels among you. Now I have, in the, I have been informed concerning you that these quarrels among you that is, each one of you are saying, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, I am of Christ. Has Christ been divided? Paul was not crucified for you, was he? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I want to stop right there for a minute. I think too many times if we go on the attack. Because we feel like we are being attacked. Don't get me wrong. Christianity today is under attack. It's under spiritual attack. I see it every day. And I know you do too. You hear the words. You hear people talk about how bad things are or how these right-wing Christians just need to go away somewhere. Let me tell you something. We need more Christians today standing firm and preaching the gospel than ever before. Because if we don't, this world is going to slip into darkness and the chaos like we've never seen. We need to come back to the heart of the gospel and that is Jesus Christ. As the church, we need to be centered in Jesus alone. We need to be pointing to Jesus alone. And how does that work? Well, here's what happens. First off, we have to understand that there is no division in the church. None. There should not be. Now, I've talked about this before. I've talked about how people like to go and call themselves whatever name they have on the front of their building. 
folks, God ain't going to yell and scream about the Baptists, about the Methodists, about the Presbyterian. He's going to want Christians. He's going to want Christians. People that follow the Son, Jesus Christ. That is who God is concerned about. God wants us to be of one mind, one body, one heart. He wants us to be united in our faith in Him. We should not let names get in the way. Are we putting the name of the Baptist church ahead of Jesus? Are we putting the name of the Methodist church in front of Jesus? Are we putting the name of the church of Christ in front of Jesus? Because I'll tell you right now, there are principles that are laid in to each of those ideas, each of those philosophies that are not governed by God but are governed by men. They would rather accuse and say words mean things that they don't mean instead of looking what Scripture says and seeing what Scripture says. And that's on both sides. I've had people yell at me and say, well, you know what? You've got a piano in church. You're going to hell. I've also had people to go, how dare you say that you have to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins? What's wrong with you? That's not what Scripture says. It's an outward sign of an inward grace. You're sending people to hell. No. There has to be balance. That's not compromise. That's coming true to what God's Word says. We need to compromise with God in that manner to bring people to understand that they, God is not compromising. God is saying this is how it is. We come to God on His terms, not ours. And that is why we are so invested in helping people see the way to Christ. Not point out and say you're going to hell, but to actually tell people, look, don't listen to me, listen to Jesus. Listen to what Jesus says. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Did he say, I am a way, a truth and a life? No, he said, I am the way, only. There is no other. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. When God comes, there's no compromise there. That's not fence sitting. That's being balanced. That's being balanced by truth. Truth leads us in that direction. Either you choose Christ or you don't. You don't choose the name on the building. You choose Christ. And if you're not being led by Christ, you need to get right. Now, folks, I know from my own personal life that when I was 15 years old, I did not know the direction I was going. I accepted God as real. I was immersed in some water, but I did not live like Jesus wanted me to. I realized that I was living a life that I wanted by my rules. I had went through the process, but I hadn't followed and committed to God. It wasn't until I heard and turned 27 years old that I realized there is more to this. Much more. And we've got to be willing to look at what the Scripture says and what we need to do. Don't go by what People say, go by what God says. And God only. Not me, not any man that's in a pulpit, but all of what God's Word says. If God's Word is true, what I'm going to say is going to be true because it's coming from here. It's not coming from me. It's coming from here. I am not going to preach to you anything but what is in God's Word. I'm not going to add to it. I'm not going to take away from it. Too many people do that today. They make the church about a social cause or a social club. That is not what God's Word says to do. That's what the Corinthians were doing. And Paul said, no! They were going by all these different leaders. Well, I follow Apollos. I follow, I follow Peter. I follow you, Paul. I follow this person. I follow that person. Quit it! Quit following people and start following Jesus. Follow Christ. Follow what God's Word says. Obey what God's Word says. And as the church, we will be united as one. Now, 
Does this affect anywhere else? Yeah, it does. The church gets affected in other places too. Badly. We let race divide us. Oh, no. I hate it. I hate division. Because by race or because of the color of somebody's skin. We are of one blood. It don't matter where you get cut from. If you, if you cut me right here, I'm going to bleed red. If you cut somebody that is from Africa, guess what color blood they're going to have? They're going to have red blood. Why? Because they bleed the same as we do. They've got the same blood as we do. If you go and you cut somebody down south of the border, you go into Mexico and South America, they, they got darker skin than we got. They got a darker complexion. You know what do you say? You know, they're going to bleed a different color? No, they're going to bleed the same color we do. Every person on this planet is going to bleed the same color we do. You know why? Because we're all the same blood. We're all one body. We're all one flesh. Everyone is created in the image of God, not in the culture that they come from. Not in the society that they come from. Not from the nation they come from. No, they are born and created in the image of God. Black, white, red, yellow, just as the old song used to say. Until it got politically incorrect to sing that song. Red, yellow, black, and white, they're all precious in His sight. I'll say it again. Because there is a need today to say the truth. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what kind of background you come from. You are in Jesus. You are one in the body of Christ. You are part of the family. You know, it, I got so excited the other night. I got to meet a young couple that had come up and visited over at the South Side Church. And, 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 and they were an uh, African-American couple from over at... Uh, over at uh, Fort, uh, over at uh, Fort Knox, beautiful couple, beautiful family, <laughs> good sense of humor, great people, love the Lord, just as good and as solid, wanting to come and be a part of fellowship. Man, it was good to see them out there. It made sense because there are so many people today that just divide us because of what color our skin is. Let me be blunt. It don't matter. Not one bit where you come from naturally. What matters is where you're going spiritually. Now, if you're going to heaven, you best better act like it. You best better be willing to accept brothers and sisters that are of different colors. Because that's the way heaven's going to look. I don't care what anybody says. And some people might like it. Well, there's gonna, you know, that's, that's something crazy. There, there was a time where people thought heaven was going to be segregated. No, it's not what God said. God said one body. Read back in Ephesians, one body, one hope, right? You are one body. Now, who's writing this? Paul. Was Paul, if Paul was an old white guy like I am. But guess what? He was writing to a bunch of people that were not the most white of folks. See, he was a Roman. He was a Roman citizen. He was European. But you know what? There were also people of darker color there. Peter was a dark-skinned guy. Jesus was a dark-skinned guy. You don't run around the Middle East and not have some different color skin. Folks, we've got to be able to understand what divides us is not important in this world. The physical does not divide us. It should not divide us. But people make it into that. Look what's going on in our world today. People are dividing up because one group's white, one group's black. Why? And if you go and say that every life matters, you're considered a racist? If you go and say we're all of one blood, then that means you're a racist too because you're colorblind? Why? Because people are looking for reasons to divide to divide us. Let me tell you what scripture says. There is only one thing that divides us and that's sin. And that divides us from God. And the solution to sin is Jesus Christ. So what do we need to do? Do we need to teach people that they need to respect boundaries and start being racist ourselves? No, we are to go and point to Jesus and say, your race don't matter. The creed and the color 
All that stuff don't matter. What does matter is the throne and who's on the throne. That's who we need to point to. That's who we need to follow is Jesus Christ. That's what Paul is saying here to the, to the people at Corinth. Corinth is so blind by their own ideas and their own principles that they are ignoring the Word of God. The very heart of the gospel. They are thinking they've got it all together because they're following people. And that's the final thing I want to talk about. That is the final thing I want to talk about right now. I want to talk about the politics that divides us. Now, I'm not going to preach on politics, folks. I'm not going to go and get into the detail and say, well, if you believe this, you're not doing right. If you believe that, you're not doing right. I'm not going to do that. I don't care if you're a Republican. I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if you're a conservative, a liberal. I don't care if you're an independent. I don't care if you're a libertarian. I don't care if you're a communist. I don't care if you're a socialist. You know what I care about? That you believe in Jesus. Why? Because guess what the Word of God says. If you go back, if you want to, you can turn right there to Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. I don't even have to look it up. I know what it says. You know why? Because I put it to heart every single day of my life. It says, for our citizenship is in heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. We are not commanded by politics in this world. Or should we be? We should not be following and thinking, okay, I've got to go and be this way or I've got to be that way. Oh, it's the right thing to do over here. It's the wrong thing to do over here. Or we let people lead us around by our noses, the politicians and all these other people. That is not going to get you to heaven. No politician alive will get you to heaven. Not a single one, but God will. Jesus will. You can vote the ticket however you want to. You should pray over that ticket and vote as Christians first. Now a lot of people look at me, well, you're telling me you've got to do this and you've got to do that, and you told me you weren't. Are you voting with your conscience? Are you voting with Christ? Or are you voting because you've got a letter after your name or somebody else has got a letter after their name? Forget about those things. Those things are not going to matter in eternity. D's, R's, I's, and everything else, every other alphabet after the name means nothing. It's just like doctors. People say, well, I trust doctors. Good, I'm glad you do trust doctors. I trust the great physician. I trust the great physician, Jesus Christ, because he's the one that can heal both body and soul. That doesn't mean I'm going to go and ignore what the doctors say. I'm going to try to listen to what the doctors say. And if the doctor tells me, that I need to fix something, I'm going to fix it. I need to change something, I'm going to change it. Yes, I'll listen to them. But I'm also going to be very, very careful in what goes on because what happens? Sometimes a doctor will prescribe you a medicine that interacts with you differently. You know that? Is doctor going to know how your body works? Not absolutely. Not 100%. Sometimes medicines will counteract. I had a situation with that. I started swelling up because I was taking one medicine at night and one medicine during the day, and they were counteracting each other, and I started, get, I started gaining weight. I was at 245 pounds Well, fluid. Part of it was fluid. I quit taking one of the medicines. Guess what happened? All the fluid went off. I'm back down to 230 pounds. Why? Because the doctor prescribed something to me and didn't know that there was going to be a reaction like that. It ain't his fault. He's human. You catch that? He's human. Everybody, doctors, politicians, all of us, every single one of us, even preachers in the pulpit, are human. We don't have a firm grasp on everything that's going on around us. We can't. We might think we do. But the truth is, God has that firm grasp. And what we need to be willing to do is submit to God. Not based on our party affiliation, not based on our words, not based on anything like that, but based on what God says and what points to the cross. What points to Jesus Christ? Is our life pointing to Jesus Christ in everything we're doing? 
That's what I want to do. I know that's what you want to do too. I know you guys and I love you all very much and you want to do that. Now we need to encourage others to do it. The world needs Jesus. The world needs to see Jesus. But they're not going to see Jesus unless we show them. What's the song? They will know we are Christians by our love. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Love. In fact, that's what Paul says here to the Corinthians. Chapter 13, verse 1. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all the mysteries and have all the knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains... But do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and I surrender the body up to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. Paul's message to the Corinthians is this. Quit saying you're Christians. Quit saying you're all these other things too. Stop focusing on the temporary things. Quit focusing on people that can go and deliver a pretty message or you're following their teaching because, man, you know them, they're your best friend or because they say something you like and tickle your ear just the right way. Start coming back to Jesus. And come in love. You want to stop the world's problems? You want to be able to overcome the hate, the anger, the animosity, all those things that are tearing this world apart. Do you want to do that? It starts with love. It starts with love. Jesus loved us enough that he died for us. Are we going to accept that gift? Or are we going to say, well, it was good, but it's just not enough. I have to trust in all these other things too. Is that what God said? He said, trust in me. That's what God said. He said, trust in me. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but through me. Are we willing to do that today? Are we willing to come to God on His terms? Are we willing to ignore what the world wants and start listening to what God wants? And are we willing to point to Jesus, to point to the gospel, to point to the cross and say there is no other name than Jesus that can give us unity so that we may be one. This morning, if you've got a decision, God wants you to be one with Him. Believe, repent, confess, be baptized, walk in the newness of life, not because the preacher says, but because of God, the Word of God says. The God of the Bible says this, not me. Don't go by the teachings of men. Don't go by the ways of men. Don't go by the uh, wisdom of men. Don't go by all that accumulated knowledge. Go by the love of God. The love of God says this is what you need to do to be saved. Maybe you want to rededicate yourself to following him. Maybe you want to get to know Jesus more. Maybe you want to challenge yourself to get to know Jesus more. Maybe you need to put down some of those things. I know I do. 
I've given up talking politics to people. <laughs> I gave that up because I'll tell you right now, nothing causes more division than politics. It causes people to hurt and die in their spirit. But I'll be glad to talk with you about Jesus because he unites us. He builds us up. Interested in apologetics and examining why God's word is historically accurate and true? Get your free copy of our ebook, Arrogant or Accurate, at www.myllbia.com today.